Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. We're here today because we have an exciting new series we want to bring you where we interview expats that are new to Vilcabamba and they have a fresh perspective on what it's like to relocate to this wonderful country. We're going to nickname this series The X Files. Stay tuned, it's going to be fun. Good morning, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. We're here this morning with our first episode of The X-Files. The truth is out there. We're here with my new friend, Linda Hall. Linda, welcome. Thank you, Joe. It's nice to be here. Well, thanks for being with us today. We are um, going to talk to Linda a little bit today about uh, her and her husband, Chad's journey here to Ecuador. And uh, they're fairly new to the country, fairly new to Vilcabamba. But we want to get all that information, and so uh, we'll, we'll be giving her the grilling, going to put her on the hot seat. Okay, so Linda, tell us where you're originally from. Uh, Montana. Montana? We came, yeah, we came here from Montana. Fantastic. And uh, how long have you been here now in Ecuador? About six months. We came down uh, in July and started traveling around. We landed in Quito first, and... That was a great big city uh, experience. I loved being there. Everything was exciting and fresh. But we always knew we were going to make our way eventually down to Vilcabamba. That was our that was our end goal. Fantastic. And how long have you been in Vilcabamba? Uh, just a little over two months now. A little over two months. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, we met them, and you know they've become fast friends with us, and now they can't get rid of us. Yeah, it seems like it's been a lot longer than two months. Um, sometimes the time here goes really slow. But other times you look back and it's like two weeks have gone by and you're like, wait, what did I do over those two weeks? How did it go so fast? That's true. Yeah. Sometimes it crawls and sometimes it's like, where did the time go? Mm, very it's a much different, so. different pace here, isn't it? Mm. I'm, I'm really enjoying it because uh, you kind of do things on your own schedule here. You don't have to... Um, there's no rat race. There's no having to be specific places at specific times. Um, they use the word tranquilo a lot. And that doesn't mean quiet. And it doesn't mean, you know, you don't have anything to do. It just means the pace is slower. And you have to be kind of chill about uh, how things go. That's Everything right. in between. You just got to be chill. That's right. And, uh, but you stay awful busy, you know, what I've witnessed. <laughs> you are teaching uh, school, right? Yeah, I went to visit at a, one of the schools here, and I ended up getting a job. So <laughs> I guess kids are just in my blood, and uh, yeah, I'm loving working at the school. It, it is, um, they were really flexible, too, with my time, which you would never find in the United States. You want to do something, they want you to be part of it, and they will be so flexible with um, how they use your time and your talents, just so that you can really be a part of that community and, um, and give back what you love. And that, that has renewed my, my love for teaching and my love for being with kids and and they definitely are some of the best teachers I have here. Fantastic. And this is a private school or public school? Yeah, it is called La Calandria. And it is a, a private school. And it's um, just in the middle of town. And it's a pretty small population. And it's a nice mix of Ecuadorian students. Uh, we have some kids from Germany, from Poland, from England, from the United States. So it's kind of just like Vilcabamba, a nice big melting pot of uh, all the different personalities that you're going to find here. They are vast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, Linda, you and your husband, Chad, had joined the hiking group? Yeah. Oh, we have been so blessed to have so many good friends in the hiking group. They, um, they are such an eclectic group of people that not only do we get to see great hikes and get to experience so many different parts of the little Vilcabamba Loja area, but we have met some really great people. Uh, and the conversations 
make the time of the hike go by so fast that you don't realize that you've done 10 miles by the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I want to stop for just one second. I just heard fireworks in the background. We're filming this on December 24th, Christmas Eve. So um, from now until New Year's, probably a couple of days after, that's what we're going to hear constantly is fireworks. Loud firecrackers. They love their fireworks here. Yes, they do. And uh, they do love their Pilsner beer here. <laughs> and the Green Club. And the Green Club, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have a lot of that. So, Linda, um, tell me about your journey here. Was there any difficulty? How was the visa experience, you know? You know, I... This is one of the things where I think I'm. we are just supposed to be here because things just happened uh, so quick and so fast and so succinctly without any real hiccups that I just really feel that I've been pushed to be here. This is the spot that I'm meant to be in right now. Uh, we started our visa process probably in March before we came and we got here in June took about three weeks once we hit Quito to get all of our paperwork completed. We used um, a really great guy, Joseph Guzne, who's been on lots of uh, channels here on YouTube. That's kind of how we found out about him. And his work was fast and perfect and without a single hiccup. Then he uh, made us an appointment for our uh, cedulas. And we thought, okay, it's in Guayaquil because that's where they had the, the fastest turnaround time. Like we could get an appointment in a couple weeks. So we traveled to Guayaquil and we thought, oh, we're, we're going to be here for a, at least a month because, you know, we've heard so many crazy stories. We went in at 9 o'clock in the morning and we were done by 10. And we're both looking at each other like, that was too fast. Something's wrong. Yeah, something is going wrong. And it's same with the visa. Like, we have it already. Are you sure this is the right one? You know, it's the right picture. It's the right name. Okay, everything's matching. And uh, it's just been amazing. Uh, all of that paperwork just went so quick. I think when it comes to the visa, the main thing is having all of the correct paperwork together the oh, first time. Before you come. Before definitely. you come, having it all together, multiple copies, and all of it, of course, has to be translated and apostilled. And, and if you apostille multiple copies, then you're going to have that for the next time. Right, right, yeah. because you don't only need it once. You need it for this then you need it for that, then you need it. So we also did decide to buy a car when we were in Cuenca, and that is probably the funniest, or not in Cuenca, I'm sorry, that was in, in Quito. Quito. And that's probably the funniest story, because in the States, you go, you buy a car, you give them the cash, they give you the keys, and they're like, okay, have a nice day, and the rest is on your own. So we give them the money, and we're waiting, and you know they're still talking to us, and we're just kind of there, like, okay, okay, so... You know, it's been about six hours, so that's very similar to the United States. You know, it takes forever to, to do the whole process. And uh, so Chad says, when when do we get the car? Where, you know, where where is the car that we just bought? And they're like, oh, it's, it's stored in the warehouse. Um, it's going to be a while. And we're like, but we're supposed to leave Quito in like a week. How, what, are, what are we going to do now? And uh, it ended up. We had to extend our stay in Quito for a little bit, waiting for the car. But they did do all of the paperwork, like going to the like what we would call the DMV, going and getting all of that paperwork. Um, they had people take us here, take us there, and we're just hoping that you know we're going to the right place. With we've just gotten in this car with a stranger. Okay, this is happening. Um, but then right on day 15, they called us at about four o'clock in the afternoon and said, okay, your car's here, which is perfect because our Airbnb reservation ended the next day. And we're like, we don't know what we're going to do if we don't have the car. So we were able to get the car and the next morning we headed to the coast and got to spend some time at the ocean, which was really amazing. They always tell you here, don't worry, don't yeah. worry. Yeah. It's going to be okay. It'll work out. It'll work. And you know what? It does. That's it does. the beautiful thing. It really does always work out. Even Muy if it's, tranquilo. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's five or six days after you were hoping to get it done, the five or six days that you ended up staying extra, you just have all these great little experiences. And you're like, that never would have happened had we just stayed on our original time frame. Yeah. It's, it's kind of meant to be. It is. Yeah. Just like me being here. It's kind of, that's. <laughs> 
So I've was been is there anything in your journey that that you thought was very difficult or something you've had trouble getting used to or Well, honestly, my stomach had a little trouble getting used to <laughs> a gringo stomach. <laughs> yes. Um but every time we went to the pharmacy and told them what the problem was, they knew exactly what to give us, and it's never lasted more than 24 hours. And, wow, you're um, lucky. <laughs> yeah, I have been very lucky. And now at this point, I just said to Chad the other day, now we can eat the vegetables, we can, you know, we make coffee using the water out of the tap. We've just kind of given ourselves some, you know, baby steps acclimating to what they have here, you know, the different mm. bacteria and whatever that have to build up in your stomach. And um, so that's been really difficult. Uh, what, missing the family. That's, I think, everybody's most difficult. Um, but if you're watching, you know, I love you, even though you think I'm a little crazy uh, <laughs> for moving here. <laughs> but uh, they, they have been very supportive, even though we're thousands of miles away. But um, technology, FaceTime, we still talk to them as if they're in the same room with us. So it makes getting over that hurdle much, much easier. There's so many free ways to talk to your family oh. in other countries. You know, Zoom, FaceTime, you name it, WhatsApp. All of and, them. You know, I mean, we've used them all. And I, I think, you know, um, and also, you know, our, our phone plan, we can call the U.S. It uses up our minutes, but yeah. uh, we can call the U.S., you know, without, without a problem. But everything else is free to use, and, you know, if you're on a fiber optic internet here... Oh, yeah. Works good. And I'm I'm still teaching online, and uh, the connection we haven't had... When we first moved into our apartment, it was kind of spotty and weird, and we had to call them out probably five or six times. But um, once they finally got everything fixed and set up just right, teaching over the internet, I have no interruptions at all. It's pretty... It's pretty amazing for such a small town to have such great technology availability. It's it blows me away. It's amazing. And uh, Chad Linda live in a new apartment building, which is just being completed as we speak, and so working out some of the little kinks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the smells of our house are the best because we live above a panaderia, so they bake fresh bread, fresh croissants cakes some of the most beautiful cakes i've ever seen are here in ecuador they do so much decoration and um you know fresh cinnamon rolls the whole nine yards ah so you wake up hungry every day because you're like "Ooh, what treat am i gonna get you know <laughs> i just walked by that place i gain a half a pound <laughs> Yeah, it's a good I, I thing try to we walk to on walk the other up. side. We have to walk up four flights, so it's like okay, we can work it off if we just go up and down four or five times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Linda, I really appreciate it. You guys have had a really good experience, I think, and uh, I think you're going to be here long term. We're not going to let go of you. I I have to say, there's it comes in waves, but in all honesty, I absolutely love it here. There is something so attractive and so. Um, just it just fills your whole body with with good feelings and love like it, you're you just know when you're supposed to be here and i i truly feel that way about Vilcabamba right now that's a very special thing here in the sacred valley mm. it's um it's got um something that's very hard to describe yeah you can't people say why why ecuador i have no idea but i know it's the right place yeah Okay, well, listen, if you have comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. We'd love to respond. And uh, if you have a, a specific question for Linda, I'll let her respond to you. And uh, we really appreciate you viewing it. Maybe you'll give us one of these. Huh? Or two. Or two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you and ciao for now.